Hi beautiful people, good morning. It's Kate here, welcome to Kate Space. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm gonna to have a go at doing some aging um, of some papers and I thought I'd just turn the camera on. I'm really keen to have a go at making one of these tall document sort of journals or tall journals and I've printed out this kit by Sharon Hirth who is the journal -O city shop I think uh, this is the one I printed it out printed out I printed it I print I can't talk I printed it out on normal oh this is slightly heavy copy paper but I made it fit to page so it's really super tall and then I printed out again a bit so it's a bit shorter and then I printed it out on this sort of heavy linen-y cardstock so I've got three covers I don't know why I did that I guess I was just playing around and then I did all the pages that she has and I just did them back to back I think these are kind of fit into this and they fold out like that and that's how you read them but mine are going to be bound in that way so they won't make any sense if you were trying to read it but it's all in French so I don't think it matters but then yeah I want to intersperse it with different things I think this was the last page and I actually just printed a French document from Ruby and Pearl XO on the back there anyway I want to have a play with that and I found a few of my own French sort of um, similar things for this beautiful calligraphy uh, that I have not been able to bring myself to use but I had a go at photocopying them on my printer and this is where you'll see what my Epson printer does to my documents it gives them all this really pink hue see how beautiful sepia and yellow that is so this is a photocopy um <clears throat> if i scan something it does the same but i need to work out how to scan it and then adjust the color probably in photoshop elements to try and get this yellow because i would love to be able to achieve that but this is just a photocopy i've done two sort of two-sided on here this one maybe is slightly better or no maybe not no such a shame and it's a really good printer otherwise but that is the one thing that i find so frustrating with the epson printers right so to start with the aging thing i guess most of you will have seen uh ruby and pearl xo heather did a video aging with angie angie is a um she's a journal maker in the states who sends beautiful journals and happy mouths to um a certain number of recipients she doesn't have any social media so you watch those videos to see what she makes and she does make beautiful things and she ages things wonderfully so her and heather got together and did a great little video which i've watched and now i'm going to have a wee play so this is one of heather's digital so she did a digital set of french letters and and things like that that we could then have a play with so that's what i'm going to do right so <clears throat> firstly i'm going to try not to stuff up my tearing i don't have a tear ruler but I think I want to tear these, so I'm just going to have to try and press really hard so I don't lose the edges. And then you have to look on the other side. So we're going to have to do some inking to try and get that to match. So we'll just see how we go with the tearing. And then if we think that cutting with the scissors would be better, we could try cutting with the scissors but so I've double sided printed so printed this on one side and then sent it back through my printer to print the back so let's see how well it matched it up 
Okay, so we've got a big white strip along the side, so it hasn't matched it up perfectly. I'm going to have, there's no way I'll be able to tear that tiny amount off. I'm just going to pull my sleeves down because it's cold. It's a beautiful sunny day outside, but it is very, very cold. I did have my heater on, but it's quite noisy, so I've turned it off. But if I get cold, I might have to turn it back on. Okay, so I've just taken that edge off. Then the other thing I will do is I'm going to take this kind of scrapey thing. So I've got this, and I've also got my foot scraper that I use to rough edges up. Or you can use your scissors, but I tend to rip things. And I'm just going to take this along the edge. I'm going to try not to do it too dramatically. And see. So in some places you could cut into the paper a little bit more than others. Okay. So I have ripped it a little bit there, but that's not, I don't mind that. I just don't know, this is a Heidi Swap tool, but I, I kind of acquired it in a huge, big bulk lot of scrapbooking things that I bought maybe two years ago. And it was in amongst all that stuff, and it's, it's good. I've not had one before. From back in the day when we used to, when we were scrapbooking and we used to age all our scrapbooking papers doing this so I don't know if I'm overdoing it but we'll see I'm going to do all the edges this is the, the one I cut with the scissors so So now for ink, I'm going to use, I've got, I've got antique linen, I've got the vintage photo, I've got one called brush corduroy, but I think that's even darker, I don't want that dark, and I've got a, I've got tea dye, which is quite light, but that's a distressed oxide, and it's kind of chalky and I don't think I want that on there so I'm going to try the antique linen and I'm just going to go around I'm going to pull oh, I might leave that little bit of tatty paper there and basically what I'm trying to do is get rid of all the white that the white furry bits which are going to give away that this is a, a photocopy you've got the white core of the paper but then again I don't want to over ink so fine balance <laughs> how is everybody today I hope everybody's well thank you so much for all your kind comments on my junk journal July journal which I made a very distinct effort to just put together fly by the seat of my pants it's not something that i normally would do it's not normally how i would make a journal but it was kind of like i gave myself a cha cha challenge a challenge a self-imposed challenge without overthinking and in some cases not really thinking at all maybe i could have actually thought a bit more about some of the things I did some of the steps but it got made and it's ready to go and it's being used it was made on time and ready to use for junk journal July yeah so some of the see how some of the color of this has actually torn off the top there I don't know how to fix that that's interesting I think the difference is, I know Angie, who um, was part of the video that Heather did, uses, gets all her things copied or printed out or whatever at a copy shop and they're um, laser prints. 
So there's a big difference between laser prints and inkjet prints. So there's a bit of inking just around that edge. And then we do, I'm going to do some of these folds. So I'm just going to fold around down these what, the folds are there for you so that's not too hard and this has already got like real dark marks on it already so it's not exactly straight And I think I want to go both ways just to make that like a really old crease that's been there for many years. And then again with this one. some new subscribers which is really exciting thank you so much for, for subscribing and um, I hope you'll watch some of the videos okay so that's that and then I'm going to go all the way I guess it folded this like this did it back in the day these old letters that you just sent Oh, you can see my ring light in there. That's a bit annoying, isn't it? I wonder. I'll turn it down. Oops, sorry. I just feel like you need a little bit of light. Oh, well, just, I guess we'll have to put up with it. And then fold on this fold here. So I just want to fold them both ways so they're folds that have been folded and unfolded lots of times now you can see this page has got lots of wrinkles in it it's kind of printed that way so I don't know whether to give it a squeeze where those are so I'm going to have a play with that a lot of wrinkling but I think that's because the original paper that this would have been on would have been quite a um, like quite a lightweight paper like almost like a typing onion skinny paper onion skin sort of paper and this is this is been photocopied onto copy paper I mean printed onto copy paper So I know that it's already kind of got shadows on it, but I am just going to go lightly over that crease with some ink. It doesn't really need anything on that one. And then maybe a bit on on this one what else could we do to it so I guess it folds that way there's the writing on the inside yeah this one's a bit strange because it's got this writing down here nothing in there but anyway <clears throat> that's okay and so that then, I guess that tucked into there originally, did it? And it's got sort of the leftovers of the seal. 
of the old wax seal, but you'd think the wax seal would be on the edge. Mm. Anyway, the other thing Angie does is she puts holes in her, just using, puts holes in her documents and things just using a unbent paper clip. <laughs> So if you wanted to, you could put like a sticker hole in here in this dark bit where it's really worn. And just go around, try not to overdo it. <laughs> Wherever the holes are, I just need to make sure it's nice and dark. So that's that one. Now we've got this one which is like a blue, so there's the letter on the inside there. Again, I think I'm going to tear this. Mm, so that's not... No, I'm actually going to cut this one. I've changed my mind. I'm going to try and... Because the edges aren't straight. had someone in today to look at our kitchen and do some measurements because once we decided that we weren't going to do the build we decided well maybe we would do some renovations of this home that we already live in and just make it um, a bit more modern a bit more easier to, to live in uh, make the kitchen bigger and our bedroom bigger and actually the lounge bigger <laughs> so it's become quite a big renovation plan um, this room that I currently work in will stay pretty much exactly the same it's quite a small single bedroom and the other bedroom the other spare bedroom will stay the same so there's a little notch here out of there which I've used scissors but I'll just Go in here with that and see if I can make it a little bit more like it's been torn. I don't want to do too much roughing up with this tool this time. So this one I've pro printed on something called trophy paper. It's like a, oh look, see this doesn't match either. <clears throat> exactly on the back so I've cut it from the front but on the back we've got this white line so we're going to have to recut it this has got kind of a linen-y or a crosshatch sort of texture to it it's quite nice paper it's really light it says 80 that it's 80 GSM um, but it feels quite a lot lighter than that it's quite nice so we'll see how this looks once it's aged a bit of scrunching up my French invoice journal which I made for the graphics fairy um, involved quite a lot of well it had quite a lot of French invoices in it which I I tried to age Right, let's just do some little bit of 
along the edge, see what happens. Keep the edges a bit furry because those are the bits that start to get damaged. That's a letter gets shoved into things. Yeah, so we had someone look, come and look at our kitchen, measure it up for a quote, and it's going to be a lot bigger than it is now, which will be nice. Uh, again, there's still a problem with getting materials and things, so it's very difficult to work on a time frame. So this has got these sort of what look like creases here, but it's also got the creases here, which is, I think, where the letter actually folds. Not sure, we'll soon find out. What's it look like on the other side? Yeah, so there, that looks about right. But then it all, all also looks like it's been folded here at some point as well. We'll see. It definitely folds here by the stamp. So that, that kind of kind of matches up a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Again, then again some letters get folded every which way some people like to fold things along the original creases and some people just don't care about that and they just fold it however you find that with dress patterns if you're a sewer and when you fold refold up the tissue paper i always had to go across the <laughs> original lines even though it would take me sometimes forever to find the original lines <laughs> But then you can buy a second hand pattern and you can see how people just folded it up and stuffed it in. <laughs> Probably a better way. So yeah, so now we have a look at the back here and we want to, I guess we want to try and match up that little stamp bit there. I do anyway. Right, how would this, oh we have to fold this bit, we haven't done this bit yet. Have I folded along there? No. No. So folding along here. And yeah, since the weather's beautiful, I will get the dogs and take them for a walk this afternoon along that little path along the river. I've been doing, showing pictures of it in my stories. Okay, now what? Oh, this needs to fold as well. So you can't really see the folds on there. On this side. I like the weight of this paper for these, so okay, goes like that and that, and then the goes like that. Right, let's see. If I want it to match up, I have to refold that one there. So it's got a couple of little folds. It's not perfect. Okay. <coughs> this little tear I've just made that a little bit bigger not on purpose but that's just happened so that's okay um, maybe a little bit of ink along some of these creases and there's something sort of a crumple there so I might just give that little corner a crumple 
sort of squidge it out again. And I might just go around some of these edges because there's a bit of white there. A good thing would be if you have some originals yourself and you photocopy them and then you can compare them at the end. I mean I've got I haven't really got anything to compare this to so it will just be what it is. There you go, not much ink. doesn't fall straight but then I guess it wouldn't have or it wouldn't by the end of it being there we go so we've got a little torn bit there and there's our little postmark and there's our little letter there <clears throat> so we want some more ink So there's two little French letters and the other one that uh, she has is these letters and these are love letters from uh, Mary to Benjamin. She had a whole set of them, Angie does, and so she shared them with, she shared one with Oh, no, I remember what I was going to do. So this is the envelope. So shared one with Heather. Sorry. Sorry about that. I lost my train of thought. And then Heather turned her oops, envelope. So let's see if we can make this into an envelope again. Gonna fold these in. Along this edge. Like that. I was gonna let I in my head when I was thinking about how I was gonna do this, I was gonna leave a gusset to glue like that. Is that what you call that? A gusset? And see what that looked like but I haven't really <laughs> left myself very much of a, anything to fold over so I'm just gonna try and fold along this edge even though I've only left myself this minute amount of paper and that's actually torn there So this is being torn open with a letter opener, quite close to that stamp. matter it's just a print out oh and this one is printed onto coffee dyed photocopy paper right so now I've got these bits here I mean you I can glue some more paper onto there I might do that and I want to make this rough like it's been torn 
open, I guess, with a, whoops, well, there you go, <laughs> with a letter opener, sort of thing. And let's pretend I made a decent gusset on that side. And I'm just going to give it a bit of a squidge. some ink. This is just an experiment. I don't know if this will work. I've got a, a big lot of letters from Fraser to Ruth um, from the 1920s, mid 1920s, um, and when I and I have got a lot now. None of them are in envelopes, and I haven't really used them because some of the letters are like I don't know, 20 pages long, and it's like what what do I do with that? Do I split them up? I know people would say, oh, you should keep them, and I just, I don't really want to keep them. I'd like to use them, so if anyone has any ideas about how to use a letter that's that long, I mean, it's a lot of paper. I guess you could put it throughout a whole journal so it could somehow be read. Okay, well, let's use the Art Glitter Glue, if I can find it. Did I pop, pop that away? <laughs> Amazing! Okay, so I'm just going to put a fine line of uh, glitter glue along here. Yeah, so my letters don't have any envelopes with them, which is a shame. Okay, so that has that spilt over the edge a little bit, which that's fine. This is just the I'm just experimenting with this one. I'm not worried how it turns out too much. So let's just glue those edges together. Okay. So inside it still looks somewhat grungy because it's coffee dyed paper. It's not the same colour because again we've got that pinky hue from the epsom printer which is a shame but it is just what i have to live with it's so hard <laughs> uh yeah okay so let's rip this and this is printed on that lighter um sort of linen textury paper so we'll see at what we end up with for this. I know I used to write letters on quite light paper. I've got actually got some very cool, not much, but I found a couple of old, um, what would you call them? See, oh, I wonder if that's gonna take the bottom script off. Airmail paper email writing paper and it's lovely and light i guess i could try printing on that oh it's okay i'm gonna have to use my scissors on this because it's such a small amount of white edge mm. oh. i'll come back and sort of rough this up later folded oh you can see the fold marks easier on this side so let's just put some folds try and get it like it on the folds here oh can't quite manage that that's okay 
doesn't have to be even. And what else? This way. I think she, I would have, if it was me, I might have done it this way. And this way, maybe. And then it goes in here. Does it go in here after I've done my little... Oh, yeah. So it fits in to our little envelope. Right, now, let's do a little bit of... Just scraping along the edges a bit. I'm going to have to do some inking on this. There's quite a lot of white. Let's see if I can get rid of some of that white. I hope you've stopped the video and then gone and grabbed something old or not old copied and having a go at making it look old you don't need too many supplies really some ink and it doesn't have to be this specific ink. of course not it can be just i mean obviously a yellowy brown sort of ink If you have laser prints, then you can also put things into tea and coffee after you've printed them, which is kind of cool. Can't really do that with inkjet prints because they'll just run or the colour comes out. So one day, I think if I get myself organised, I might take some of my digital kits and go and get some laser prints done. I wonder how, if they have different kinds of paper that you can ask them to do it on. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Or you could take your own paper. Like I've got some, I've got some, um, what do you call it, newsprint, newsprint paper. That would be cool to print on. My printer um, does take that. It doesn't like it very much. But it does take take the newsprint. Sometimes I get a bit of the head strike, which is the dark. The dark um, <clears throat> black marks where the papers sort of hit, hit the printer head and made marks. It's always disappointing when that happens, but it's just... It's just part of it, I guess, of home printing. I think a, having a laser printer at home would be quite pricey. So I'm just going to give this a bit of a, a crinkle. It just looks too... too... Um, pristine. It's got a bit of a rip there. Okay. And there's our letter. I haven't read it. I find um, I'm not as good at reading this cursive writing as I used to be. Just not because we're not used to it. Okay, well there we go. That's quite... Cool. Let's just squish it in, and the more we squish it in, the older it's going to get. Look, look, isn't it? So there's our three things. One thing I thought I might do with this one. <coughs> Excuse me. I know it's an American letter, but what about if we stuck a real stamp on it? I know that means we won't get that bit of we cover up that little bit of um, postmark there. I'm going to pop it on anyway because, you know, why not? Might be 
a little bit too much, a little bit too much glue. It's quite an old New Zealand stamp actually. It's quite a neat one. I like that one. I mean, you could, I don't know if I'm brave enough, I might try it. You could get like, is this, I've got a fountain pen here. I don't think it's got black ink in it though. You could get a black ink pen. This might ruin it because I think it might just look too much like a line, but you could draw Draw that line and then just smudge it. Oh, that kind of worked actually. <laughs> okay, so there's my letters. My three letters. So a letter to Benjamin. And then a couple of the French foldy out ones. I still think they look quite pristine. Um, what do you guys think? maybe i could make them look even grungier i don't i don't know don't really know but yeah it's fun it's fun to have a play and i guess it just takes practice and experimenting um a bit to see oh i don't know why i don't even know how that one went together i like that to get you know the right amount oh no i folded that one all wrong anyway yeah, so that was fun. I hope you'll have a go at doing some uh, aging and let me know how, how you go. And I will see you again soon in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.